Hi, I'm Leslie with the Bookmobile Extension Services Department. And last time I saw you, we made this easy envelope pillowcase. Today's project is a furniture redo, and we are going to make a slip cover for this ottoman. My original ottoman that I started recording and taking apart, um, once I got into it, I found out that the top was broken. It wasn't really worth my time to maybe cut a new top. Plus I had to purchase this polyfoam. And even though it was a 40% discount, um, I am gonna take that back. And this project should be much simpler. But as most projects, you never know until you get into them what it's going to entail. And certainly in today's environment, we are all used to ebbing and flowing. So thank you for joining me for my plan B. Um, before we get started, I did want to let you all know about some other projects that I've done over the years. This is um, my dining table. Um, it's a small space, so I wanted to kind of make a banquette with it. And I started looking for a church pew. I found one um, on Craigslist. It was a 10-footer. And with the help of my brother-in-law and my sister and my mom, we cut it down to six foot and then used the extra four foot to make a little microwave kind of kitchen island for me. The table is actually two tables. I found them up at the Habitat Restore in Jacksonville. The top is, or, or it was, a kid's activity table has these great drawers that are good storage if I've got candles or takeout menus, paper napkins, um, deck of playing cards, anything I can store in there. And it did have crayons and paint and everything else on it. So I sanded it down, might have put a little bit of white paint on it. I cut down the corners so that it would make it easier to get into the bench part. And then the second table that it went with was a diner kind of table, like a four top. And I needed the bottom part of that table. It's like a pedestal. And then that way it gave me room to get around and under the table to get into the bench. I didn't have to deal with any legs on the table. The little bench here was from another thrift shop in town. And all I did is I found this really cool kind of alligator vinyl and it was maybe half of a yard. And I just recovered that bench. This is a light that um, one evening when I was taking my daughter to volleyball up at Jack's Beach and I had a couple of hours to just kind of play around. Of course, I went to one of my favorite thrift shop and found this kind of like a vintage um, light fixture. It's almost like a wicker kind of rattan and it was painted kind of a brown Pepto-Bismol kind of color and I just spray painted it with some gold paint. And it certainly looks better than the kind of 1990s light fixture that I had up there. I do need to go ahead and paint the ceiling, but I painted that ceiling probably 20 years ago and it's a purple. And I don't know if I remember the color, so I'm gonna have to do a little research. I just love this desk chair. This is heavy metal. I'm thinking it's probably from the 50s. And when I got it, it had a very distressed kind of green leather. I'm thinking that it probably was leather, but it really was in disrepair. I lived with it for a few years and then I found this fabric and I just thought how cool it would be. So um, I funkified it and it wasn't that hard. It just, like most of these projects, um, is an exercise in patience. This director's chair I found on the side of the road. The fabric um, was ripped 
And so I brought it home. The frame itself was in great shape, just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. I had some fabric that I kind of patterned after um, what was on it, and it wasn't that hard at all. This is a sewing cabinet that I found at a thrift shop for $10, and it actually still had the Singer Sew and Touch sewing machine, so that was quite a deal. All we had to do was paint it purple, one of my daughter's favorite colors, and the hardware, we just spray painted it gold. You can see that the sewing machine was underneath this cabinet, and all you do is open up the top pieces, pull the sewing machine up, and then one of the pieces goes back down and holds it in place. But it makes for a great vanity, a desk, it could even be like a TV console. So that was quite a find. This dresser um, was another great deal. You know, a lot of times thrift shops get so many donations of furniture, big pieces, that they really price them right to move them out. So this dresser I bought at another thrift shop for $25, and this is solid wood. This is a beast of a dresser. It's absolutely beautiful. Has some nice deep um, drawers. And I tell you, it was really um, kind of junky when I saw it. It had all these trim pieces hanging down. So what I did is I went ahead and finished off taking those trim pieces. You can see in this photo, um, around the drawer edges, it is a little bit lighter. And, you know, this was kind of a little shabby chic project, so I wasn't going to get too crazy on it. So I did just kind of swab on some white paint, put on some drawer pulls that I had found at another thrift shop. And this should be a dresser that will last my daughter for years. It's really well made. For this project, what we're going to need, I do have a staple gun. I have some needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver, a hex key has many different sizes, my scissors, my wonderful little hammer, clothespins because I just use them for everything. I've got some pins. I have my glasses for some of that fine close up work. A driver. I have to tell you, my brother in law bought me a set, and this has been the best present anybody could have given me. Have a cup to put my different staples. All of those are from that other ottoman that I started on. And then the sewing machine. This is my dining room table that I showed you in the projects that I've done. And because I don't want to scratch up the wood, I have put down a towel just to protect the surface. But what we need to do with this ottoman is figure out how we're gonna take this fabric off. And this ottoman is from a friend of mine. When I had to revert to plan B, I asked my friend Karina if she had an ottoman that I could recover for her. And she did, so that was perfect. So I see we've got some hex bolts right here in the corner. There's two, four, six, eight of those. It also has a couple of screws in each bracket as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take my hex key and start disassembling. To help me later and to make sure I do not lose any of these parts, I'm going to put them into this plastic cup. 
All right, that's the last bolt. I do have eight screws to remove. I did want to let you know that, you know, this fabric is in good condition. The cushion itself feels like it's in good condition, but I'm going to go ahead and just disassemble it to make sure I want to take a look at it. Um, but to make it even easier for you, you could just do a slip cover right over the top of your ottoman. And with that, the legs come off. And now I'm going to remove this fabric. The staples should be able to be removed just by taking your flat edge screwdriver and just kind of wiggling that staple out. If they give you any resistance, you can use the needle nose to kind of help. Or if you need a little more, you can take your hammer and just get up underneath there, tap, and it should pop right out. So we're gonna do that all the way around. And my last staple. All right, so I have removed all of the staples. Now we get to see what we're working with. This does have a nice layer of foam all the way around and an extra thick layer up here on top. So you've got some good cushion, but everything looks great. I think we're good to go. Now, you know me, I don't like to throw anything away. This pillowcase we made with the old bed sheet that had the tear in it. Well, this slip cover is going to be from an old bedspread that I had, but it had seen like one too many washes. And what I did is on the edges, this is a super cool bedspread. It's that chenille, very kind of vintage, it's classic. It had fringe all the way around it. And fringe can be very expensive to buy. So I just went ahead and cut it off and I'll save it for projects like this one. The pattern on this bedspread was a little hard to see when you're trying to hold a, a big um, piece of fabric up. So I did kind of look at all of it and I chose where I'd like to cut. So my clothespins are marking where I want my corners to be. And shabby chic is very forgiving. It's not expected to be perfect, which is perfect for me. So I have just flipped the top of the ottoman over. I'm going to find my four corners. and then we'll be able to cut it. I think to make this a little more easy for me because it's a little, um, I guess I'm yielding here. So I'm going to cut down about five, five or six inches, and then I can always go back and cut more. But I'm just gonna find one of these lines and cut on it. All right, I'll put this back with my fabrics. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it. This is going to be kind of like hemming, so I want to see where the bottom of my fabric is going to hit this ottoman top, and then we're going to add that fringe on. All right, so we're just going to go in reverse. I'm gonna put the leg in, take my hex bolt, take my other hex bolt, take 
take those two screws. And do that on the other three legs as well. All right, good to go. Okay, I have the fabric cut and now I'm going to put it on wrong side because in addition to cutting the extra that I need, I'm going to go ahead and make my little darts here so that it gives this slip cover a nice kind of clean finish. Okay, I did go ahead and cut around the edges. Now I'm going to pin up my um, my darts here. I do want it to be a nice fit. So I'm just going to take my pin and put it right where these two meet on the corner. This is the fabric where those two um, pieces of fabric meet. And then I know to stitch right there. And I'm going to do that on the other three corners as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and take it to the sewing machine. I just want to do a quick check of fit before I make any cuts and before I put the fringe on. I think that's going to fit great. Since that seemed to fit really well, I'm going to go ahead and cut off my extra fabric on those seams or the darts on the sides. And if I wanted to, I could go back in and um, sew them flat, like where this extra fabric is. I could go back in and do that, but what I really want to get to is putting the fringe on. So I'm just going to take this, and it still has a little bit of the bedspread fabric on it. I'm just going to fold that underneath and then stitch this right to the top of my ottoman cover. I wanted to thank you all for joining us this summer for our summer reading program. And to let you know, our secret code for this program is TOGETHER08. Let's go ahead and try it out. So it seems to fit really well. And it was fairly simple. And again, with items I had lying around the house, it's an easy kind of redo. If you want to freshen something up, maybe change it with the seasons.
And because it's shabby chic, it does afford us a little bit of imperfection. I do appreciate you joining us. And I wanted to share some items that we do have in our um, collection. They're wonderful, kind of just cheap and easy projects to do around the house. Some flea market finds, flea market makeovers, flea market makeover outdoors, and then jazz up your junk. So we've got a great collection. We also have a wonderful digital collection through Overdrive. So we hope that you try something out. And if you do, please share with us. We'd love to see your creations.